I'm just reading some beautiful Sufi poetry today, and I thought I'd share just about three or four of them. They're only about two or three lines each, but each one has such a beautiful thought, a really nice prod for meditation, really. I want not to want. A long-suffering soul was asked, what does your heart want? He said, that my heart not desire anything. It reminds me in, <laughs> in Hawaii, I was in a men's room and right above the urinal <laughs> on the wall was this little saying that I remember to this day, it's been 25 years. It said, there are two ways to get rich in life, to earn more or desire less. And I knew that was wisdom when I read it. So this is the Sufi's way here. What do you want? I want my heart to desire nothing, to be content. Nothing owns you. The Sufi path is this. You own nothing and nothing owns you. That's to need nothing outside of yourself for your own bliss, your own contentment, your own joy, to require nothing to always be self-contained. That, that is the real freedom. That's what it is to be free. You know, I was talking to Swami Prabhutananda, this is an interesting thing about drugs actually, and about these highs and uh, these vast experiences that, uh, that folks were engaging in in the 60s, 70s, 80s, in any big city anytime actually, looking for satisfaction in life through the ecstasy of drugs. And narcotics and so I asked him I said is that valid I mean what what is that and uh, he made a very interesting statement he said yes you can touch things divine that way you can experience ecstasy you can experience bliss and some higher states he said there's no doubt but he said you see if you need the drug to experience those things then you're beholden to the drug you have signed a contract of slavery he says Vedanta or spiritual life is about freedom to be beholden to nothing to be free in and of yourself joy inside the heart what is the sufi path to find joy inside the inner heart when sadness comes you know there's all this talk in spiritual life about taking refuge in the divine only and when they talk that way they're talking about that divine nature within you to take refuge in there for all of your needs, to not, to not look outside for things to distract you or to comfort you or to give you strength, you know, but to take refuge in that, that inner world, to be well enough, I guess, in touch with what you are in your nature, to be well enough uh, introduced to the idea of grace, to the idea of compassion, that you really do love yourself. And through that love and knowing that love, you love the world around you. You love those around you. Because until you can find that compassion for yourself, until your inner world is the most encouraging and enlightened place that you know, then you're not ready to love someone outside because you won't know how. To love yourself is to know how to love someone else. So always make sure that inside you have that kind of refuge, an honest one, a truthful one, that kind of, one that's full of integrity. You can't have an inner world that lies to yourself, an indulgent inner world where really it's just a party of sentimental feelings. These feelings have to be based on integrity and relationship with your own nature, with the divine, with God, if you will. So there's some Sophie, Sufi poets for us today to think about these things, enjoy these things, and grow into these things.